I would like to have a chat about uh, what we are doing with respect to internet standards development with respect to the work of the IETF in Africa. And um, so I'll sort of skip through most of these slides since uh, I'm going to cover that. Um, and sort of start at a point where um, we we'll like to say that for many years, um, actually since the first packets was sent well, well, from Africa to you know, uh, the Northern Hemisphere, um, Africa has been considered as largely consumers when it comes to the internet as opposed to contributors. And um, the work of the IETF is one platform that provides an opportunity for, for us as people coming from Africa to contribute to the development of the internet. And so the question is, how can we actually be able to engage at that point? Um, we've had a couple of initiatives uh, at the Internet Society within the African Regional Bureau uh, towards promoting um, engagement or involvement of the region in IETF activities. Uh, the first one is the ISOC IETF Fellowship um, that Andre has just mentioned. I happen to be among the first two fellows that went for this fellowship. At the time, I was not working at ISOC. Um, it was myself and a gentleman uh, called Alena Ina, who we probably know. Um, we went to the first uh, fellowship uh, program uh, for the IETF in Montreal in 2005. And since then, the program has been more established, formalized, and we've had at least 44 Africans uh, going through um, this fellowship program since 2006. Um, We've tried to do some other activities with respect to creating awareness. Um, and what we've done is through various events that take place in Africa, for instance, the uh, AFNOG meeting or the now, which is referred to the African Internet Summit. Uh, we tried to hold workshops and forums at those events. Uh, there was one in 2011 in Tanzania, um, in 2012 when the AIS was in Gambia. Um, we, we try and organize sessions and we get individuals who attend these meetings who are IETFers to sort of talk to the stakeholders or the participants who are attending that meeting and share their experience of what it me means to get involved with the IETF, how they can get involved and uh, the kind of what to expect when, uh, when they engage uh, with the IETF. So, We've tried that, but um, we feel that it has not had the success or the traction that we had hoped to achieve. Um, we've also tried having remote hubs, or what we call uh, IETF hubs, which take place at the same time when the IETF is taking place. And so this will be, um, for instance, if the IETF is taking place at, at this very moment, same time um, in somewhere in Europe where the time zone is more convenient, would have people in a different country, like in Rwanda or Tanzania, Kenya, uh, sitting in a room with a projector connecting to the live stream, and they will get to follow the discussions of what's going on um, at the actual ITF meeting remotely. So that, um, I'll say we've done a couple of that. We're trying to find out what the right mix is to get um, the, the community in Africa to get involved. I cannot say we found the right mix or the right recipe to make this get a lot more traction. And um, we are trying many things going forward, so we want to try a couple of things. Um, Andre also mentioned the ITF fellowship for the policy makers. I have to say this one has worked really well. Really well in that um, we've managed to get policy makers who have been traditionally going to the ITU meetings, the ITUD, ITUT uh, um, sessions, and so they are more accustomed to that. And so, in fact, to many of them, they did not fully appreciate the work that the IETF does towards standards development. They are more accustomed to the ITU processes, um, or IT standards development processes. And so a good number of them have actually had the opportunity to go to the IETF and see how the standards uh, development takes place. And they've actually come back appreciating 
a lot more of the work that actually gets done at the IETF, which they were not privy to before. So this one has had an impact, a lot more to do with uh, some of the work that we do as the Internet Society, but also in opening up the minds of the regulators towards what it means to have an open uh, internet and the evolution of the internet, um, which is underpinned by this, you know, the principles of the internet. So, um, in looking at all the work that we've done, um, have we been able to achieve so much in trying to um, get the Africans involved? As I mentioned earlier, not really. There's been something, something we can say, we sort of we can shout a little bit of success, not a lot of success, but a little bit of success. Um, just this year in March, for instance, um, we have a gentleman called uh, SM, that's what we call him, is uh, SM Munisami from Mauritius, uh, who had his first RFC published. And um, why I think it's an interesting RFC is because it, it updates existing RFCs on some topics that we covered earlier this morning which is on uh, SSH fingerprint uh, resource record entry on DNS, which is a feature that is also now supported by Dane. So basically, uh, the resource record is updated uh, using um, a new algorithm, and um, that new algorithm is supported in Open um, SSL, so, um, so you can use it to, up, uh, to put in new fingerprint uh, algorithm and use that for your SS, uh, SSH fingerprint authentication and connecting using SSH and then. So, you know, I think that's a good thing, you know, coming from someone from our region. That's, 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 that's significant. I don't know of any other person from Africa who's uh, published, drafted, and uh, drafted an RF, uh, 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 had a draft come through uh, as, as an RFC. So I thought that was quite big. We've not done anything huge about it, but I thought it's worth mentioning that, you know, at least there's an RFC out there from, done by someone from Africa. And he's gone through the IETF fellowship program that we, we have at the uh, Internet Society. Um, we've also had uh, Afrinic engaged uh, at the IETF um, with respect to RPKI. I know Afrinic staff do follow RPKI discussions. Uh, just like all other IRIRs have done um, on that issue. Um, we've also had others who are very interested, I think, um, Alan Barrett from South Africa, who you probably all know, um, who was quite active in the IETF, still is now the CEO of Africa, Alain Mina, um, among others. But, um, you know, there's a time where we only knew that like, there were five individuals from Africa who were really following what was going on at the IETF. And so um, this leads us to ask the question, why do we want to then improve um, um, the African participation of the IITF? In addition to you know, just not making Africa not become a consumer of what happens uh, of, of the internet and also contributing, um, it's because the future really looks forward to, you know, it's going to be internet oriented, it's going to be, um, what uh, policymakers call an information-based society. And as we lead to what they are, one of the areas where we need to make a contribution will be the internet. Um, we are definitely ready. I think um, by this I mean, you know, we. it's no longer at that point in time where Africa was the dark continent when it came to internet connectivity. I think we are at a point where I am pleasantly surprised every day uh, going to various events. Uh, we've just done a couple of events. One was last month in, in, in Kenya on DMS, and uh, we were able to put in a one gigabit connectivity for the conference. Um, then I thought, okay, that's big. Kenya is well known, there is connectivity, so one gigabit is probably, it's feasible. Then just last month, uh, so that was in July. So last month um, in August, we had the pairing forum in Mozambique. So I did not expect that we'll be able to provide one gigabit connectivity for the conference. I thought, guess what? We were still able to do that. So it means connectivity in terms of 
um, it's it's no longer what it used to be. I mean, if you're able to deliver one gigabit to a conference, uh, you look at reports and studies that are going out as showing that uh, by the year 2015, at least 50% of the population of Africa will be will be within 25 kilometers to a fiber node. That's 500 million people within 25 kilometers to a fiber node. Um, this uh, number is going to go to 75%, I think, by the year 2021, according to uh, research uh, projections that show that 75% uh, will be within 25 kilometers uh, to a fiber node. So it means we are pretty much ready. Uh, connectivity is growing, and there is a lot of access available out there. And um, most importantly, um, we have the critical mass of engineers. I think just being in this room for me, um, there's one thing that's been very clear, the questions that we are getting. I mean, before talking about, you know, cutting edge topics like DAME, you know, it's pretty much uh, out uh, at the cutting edge, at the forefront of, uh, you know, development. Um, you would not get questions, but being in this room, uh, in this uh, conference at the IE, we started hearing them yesterday, not even today, you know, before we even made the presentation. So it means every, we have the expertise, we have the clue, we know how or where to get the information from. So we are pretty much at par with the rest of the world if you will, uh, when it comes to uh, issues related to internet development and internet access. So we are at that point in time where we now just need to move our focus and get engaged with the standards development. So how do we think we're going to accomplish this? First is, of course, getting more people involved um, in the working groups. Secondly, uh, participation of the, uh, uh, at the IETF, uh, either face-to-face -face or remotely, that needs to happen. And thirdly, and which we think is going to be important, is bringing an IETF meeting to Africa. Um, so I, I will say that again, bringing an IETF meeting to Africa is something we want to actually accomplish. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit more. How do we successfully bring an IETF meeting to Africa? Now, uh, the internet, uh, the, the IETF, um, Administrative and Oversight Committee does some surveys about IETF meetings and participation at the end of every IETF meetings. And um, I was going through and looking at some of the statistics and um, going back to 2010, you will see that uh, at least 44.8% of the re uh, respondents who uh, responded to the survey um, were in favor of attending an ITF um, to be held in either South or Central America. Now, this is a shift. When I attended, the, uh, Alain and I attended the IETF in 2005, there was a discussion about the IETF going to other parts outside of North America, Europe, and Asia. That means Latin America and Africa. And being in that meeting room, the resistance and the comments that came on the floor Made, made us realize that, you know, I don't think I will retire from this particular industry having seen an IETF come to Africa. That's the impression I left with. But only five years later, to see a statistic where, you know, 40, uh, 40 plus percent of the respondents would not mind to go to uh, a region outside of the traditional regions where the IETF meetings have been held, for me, was actually very welcoming. I mean, I thought that means I can actually retire having attended an IETF meeting in Africa. So th that was quite encouraging. Um, almost 40%, I would say 40% of them were in favor of an IETF meeting being held in Africa. So that, that's really a huge shift from, you know, back in 2005. But the question is, why then have there not been an IETF meeting here? Um, first and foremost, we don't have many African participation. And a lot of the discussion you will see with the IETF is that they would like to go where most of their members come from. So the reason there's been IETF meetings taking place in China, um, 
because you know there's quite a huge number of participants coming from Asia, China, Taiwan, um, equally Europe and North America. Um, but from Africa, consistently, I will say just about five people. Um, so we need to grow these numbers. Um, ITF participants, another reason is ITF participants pay their own travel costs. Um, travel to Africa has not always been that affordable. Uh, it can be quite expensive, it can be sometimes quite difficult to get to. Um, there is also a perception that Africa does not have the capacity to host an IETF meeting. Um, now I feel very comfortable, uh, I probably did feel comfortable a couple of years back, I, I did an IETF meeting, uh, sorry, an ICANN meeting in Nairobi um, a couple of years back, and I worked with the very same team that does the network, for instance, for the IETF, uh, very long, and they wanted 100 megabits for the meeting, I was able to give 100 times 2 with redundancy on fiber, and the meeting went very well. So, if we can be able to pull a gig connectivity to Maputo for a conference, I'm pretty sure the IETF as well coming, bandwidth is not going to be a problem. If we can do the same thing with Liquid in Kenya as they did for the DNS forum, that means you know connectivity won't be an issue. You want to say something? Yeah, yeah. If the IETF comes to Nairobi, I will tell you right now that Liquid will, if possible, um, you know, depending on if the hotel and if you've got part of there, I will happily supply a gig of bandwidth to sponsor the meeting. So, you know, yeah, so, so um, we're overcoming a lot of those challenges and, you know, it's, it's good to have the support of, you know, Liquid and other partners um, in our region. The other thing which is, is the perception of security. Um, basically, we, we have quite a number of challenges. I think uh, security is just one. Um, last year we were going to have, an, we were organizing the pairing forum in Maputo and towards the very end, I mean, sorry, in Dakar, Senegal. And it so happened that it was in West Africa and we all know last year West Africa was faced with the, the I didn't like the language, personally, I have to say, it said West Africa, but there were only two, three countries in West Africa that were going through Ebola, and as a result, Senegal was seen as a country that was, you know, very uh, much in that same zone, so it affected the attendance of the event. So, every place you organize something, there will always be something that will give that negative perception. The, the ICANN meeting I was talking about in Nairobi a couple of years ago was affected by the fact that we had all these insecurity incidents with Al Shabaab, and so the turnout was not great. So, you know, there will always be something that will, will hinder that um, great attendance or participation of Holon, uh, or in. Our objective really is to successfully host an IETF meeting in Africa by the year 2018. So, because the IETF has a long period of planning, we would like to see if it's possible over the next three years to successfully make sure that there is a calendar date set in there for 2018. Why 2018? Um, the LAC region, Latin America and Caribbean, was able to successfully plan this, and as um, at, at present, there is going to be an ITF meeting taking place in Buenos Aires next year. That is the ITF of 96, 95 or 96? 96, okay. 96. 96 is going to be in Buenos Aires, oh. uh, in, in Buenos Aires. So if they've been able to do that for Latin America um, in 2016, and it took them yes, about three years of planning and organizing and getting the community behind the initiative to support, to make sure that, you know, the ITF community is comfortable enough to make that, uh, you know, uh, make that uh, plan and accept to actually go into Latin America, then we also think that we can be able to do so. So, um, so we are looking at 2018 as well for our region, um, and the way we plan to do so is, one, by growing the ITF community in Africa, mobilizing the um, what we call the AFTA 
community around this objective and changing false perceptions. Um, and so we will definitely need everyone's support in doing so. So how do we plan to go about this? First, we want to come up with uh, or establish a community-based task force to lead uh, the efforts towards having an IETF. We don't want this to be an ISOC initiative or an ISOC African Bureau uh, initiative for that matter. We would like this to be driven by the community, by the experts that we have. Um, we want that task force to be able to define its scope and engage the community towards this goal. And of course, uh, counting on the technical community's um, support to become IETF ambassadors. So we would like to have, you know, some activities towards that end in South Africa, East, uh, Eastern African countries, uh, involves creating awareness, um, you know, supporting the task force efforts uh, by developing local communities, ITF uh, communities, through working with institutions, be it universities, be it technical institutions that are focusing on internet work. So all that's what we are looking to do. Um, so we sort of started, we are drafting some documents. Uh, we started this initiative during the ACNOG event, that, um, actually not ACNOG, but the African Internet Summit that was in Tunisia uh, in June. Uh, we got a couple of volunteers, uh, happy to take on more volunteers, but we are hoping to develop some guidelines on how this, the work of the uh, task force air cycles to contribute, uh, please see me after this and to let you know how this will progress. I know I owe the community, or rather we owe the community a document on how to proceed going forward, and that's work in progress. We should have some.